Greetings, Vincent, all the way from Queensland, Australia. How you doing? I'm really well, man, over in Los Angeles, California. About a 14-hour um, flight, flight, flight from you. Whew, I was going to say, I'm loving that sunshine compared to where I am this morning. <laughs> but uh, it's an absolute honor to meet you this morning. Uh, obviously, we're here to talk about a new film that's coming out exclusively to Shutter Streaming Services from August the 4th, a little film called What Josiah Saw. Now, this film, congratulations to you, has already taken out various uh, winning awards at various festivals. But... Um, most importantly, the film's about to be released in style on a horror streaming platform. So already a big congratulations to you. And if we have a look at you on IMBD, you've already got a fantastic career thus far with previous films like Cold Water and and then I and and then I go. Um, so some great films under your belt already. And to break the ice, because we've never met before, I wanted to question uh, if you love horror films personally, and if so, what's your favorite? Oh, that's a good question. Um... I always, you know, when it comes to horror, I, I kind of respond to the ones that feel almost confusing, whether they're real or supernatural and not really clear on it. I mean, I'm I'm fans of a lot of different types of horror. Some of them just guilty pleasure types. Like, I, I'll love a movie like Insidious, but, I, you know, my favorite, honestly, I don't even think people call it a horror, but it was would be Come and See. I mean, that was yeah. the most like intense reaction i think i've ever had for like a any movie and um i kind of i guess i would call that a horror movie but not conventional you know um i mean i have a lot of favorites other than that but <laughs> tremendous think, no that's a great let's answer. go let's I'll go with come and see I love it. I'm taking that one. Now, with this film, I have been very honored to screen the film prior to this interview. And you're going to hear a lot of interviews say how much they loved it. Please hear my heart. I thoroughly loved it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So to meet you, I'm, I'm very honored. Oh, I've got a couple of butterflies swimming in me because I've enjoyed <laughs> the film that much. I kid you not. Oh, wow. Now, as a director, and here you're also serving as a producer and editor, you know, I imagine there's a lot of stories you're probably looking through. You're thinking about maybe making that one as a film or that one as a film. Um, you know, when you read the story of what Josiah saw, what is it that actually grabbed you that really encouraged you to turn this into a motion feature film? Yeah. I mean, I, I had, um, read this, God, eight years ago, nine years ago, he, the writer was sending me pages as he was doing it. And, um, I had read, read a few of his scripts and they were all very, very sort of distinctive, like very different, very unique ways of telling stories. And I just was kind of like you can't be serious when i was reading this i was like there's the scene that happens and i was like are you kidding me like you're gonna go there? like that's insane and it was only like a third of the way into the movie and i was like where the hell is this movie gonna go from here and so he'd send me more pages and then when i saw what he was doing like switching gears and getting into different characters within chapters i was you know i just was all along for the ride and by the end of it i was rattled so uh it's i think it's hard to rattle me in my opinion with, with something that would be scary. And, um, I was just in it, I was in it. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I kind of was like, all right, I, and this was in 2013. So it was sort of at the time elevated sort of psychological horror was kicking off. Like it follows came out a little bit after that, the mm -hmm. witch. Um, and so things like hereditary came out and it was like, all right, I was on the right track, at least with knowing, like, I wanted to do this as a horror movie even though, you know, it can kind of take take on different tones at times. Tremendous. And how long did it actually take to make the film, basically filming from start to finish? Was it a very lengthy process or did you have a bit of a tight schedule on that one? Yeah, once you're financed and going, it's you never have enough time. I mean, yeah. I think we filmed, I mean, to be honest, for what the budget was, we filmed uh, 22 days of shooting, so actual shooting mm -hmm. days. So it's, you know, four, four to five weeks. Um, and then about a month of prep, but it was hell. It, this shoot yeah. was, it was, an, it was really tough. That said, we had a lot of fun. Like when you're filming these kind of intense scenes or scary movies, it's never like all oh, the sets tense or something like that. It's everyone's so happy and jumping on each other after we get a, a great shot or a take. And <laughs> we were all really excited what we were doing, you know, what we were getting. 
Tremendous. Now, we're not going to do yeah. any spoilers here. That's not allowed, obviously. Sure. But I do want to comment and say, obviously, this film does consist, and you've touched on it briefly, you know, dark and brutal and unsettling moments. Um, I was sort of curious to question if you had any inspiration, um, whether it's from other films, which you've already touched on briefly, or maybe just other people. Did you get any sort of inspiration to really push this thing to its limits? I mean, as you already mentioned briefly, like Hereditary and It Follows, maybe they inspired you, but yeah, just sort of curious as to what inspired you to go to the top. Not really, because I had read this before those were ever made, and and I obviously I, I've become a fan of those kind of movies, but um, I think my, my sort of the filmmakers that I responded to were the ones I watched in my impressionable years, I would say, like from 14 to 18. I knew yeah. I wanted to make movies, very young and so those movies i was watching sort of not even my favorite movies but those ones i was watching during that time just kind of ingrained like my own film aesthetics um mm. you know i'm a fan of a lot of different directors I, I i can name a bunch but i don't think there's one that i'm like oh this is my guy or something you know i think yep. the script did a lot of the work of 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 uh sort of being unique and taking something and, and making it your own after that. Um, yeah. Which is what I love to do. I, I, I write occasionally, but I rather read somebody's thing and fall in love with it and kind of make it your own. It's a little easier. You feel a little less naked creatively because people, when people critique your script, you, you take it a lot more personal, I think. Yeah. It at least like I, at least I do. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, I was sort of curious to ask, too, yourself and the tremendous cast, which I'll talk about more very shortly, you know, how did this film affect them and how this film, making this film, affect you? You know, was it a very sort of a heavy oh. burden or, you know, was there any sort of aftermath making scenes or certain film, certain areas of the film, sorry? Yeah, uh, it was, like I said, it was probably the toughest film that to make that of all the ones I did. Um mm -hmm. It was just, there was always problems. <laughs> I, it was the first time I ever had PTSD directing oh. nightmare, nightmares um, right. after shooting for about two weeks straight. I'm not joking. Like wow. every every night in the morning after for two weeks, every night I would have these really sort of stressful directing dreams, thinking I was still shooting and just being wow. like, and I'd wake up being like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm here. I'm done. We did shoot it yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was not that was not normal for me um my first two films yes. that i directed never had that um i mean a lot of the times the movie making that stuff that goes wrong isn't necessarily stuff that is um you know related to the movie it's like all of our mm -hmm. wardrobe fell out of a u-haul truck on the freeway oh. at one point uh two of our main characters totally wardrobe gone uh, oh. Our house got bur our Airbnb got burglarized. We had a whole thing, and then they ended up catching the guy, um, like a week later, because he was spending one hundred and twenty dollars of <laughs> Shalotsky's fast food with his or first eighties uh, friend's credit card, and so it, they they raided this guy's motel and got yeah. everything back. And he had stolen people's dogs. He was like a pro thief. Um, so we got it back, but just crap like that. The whole shoot, like. One yeah. after another, things were going Just adds, haywire. That's the <laughs> problems that you had. That's insane. Yeah. Good stories, though. I always love hearing the nitty gritty sort of of details them. about behind the scenes. Plenty of them. Uh, let's talk about some of the performances. I could honestly sit to you, sit here all day and praise these performances. Uh, they're all tremendous and they're all doing Absolutely. things that are very impressive and jaw dropping. But uh, I was curious to talk briefly about obviously uh, Robert Patrick, who does play Josiah in the film. Um, you know, I was sort of curious to, to question, you know, what attracted you to grab Robert Patrick? Because, again, he does deliver a lot of intense and creepy moments on screen. If there's any feedback about that actor and his performance, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a fan of him um, mm. since I was young. I mean, there's a lot of actors you, you always watch and you, you look forward to maybe working with one day. But I had a friend, a personal friend that knew him, that had worked with him, and he, you know, his name is Ronnie Blevins. He was in the film too. He plays one of Nick Stahl, Eli's henchman that goes to the carnival with him. Um, okay, yeah. And uh, so he recommended, he's like, you got to talk to Robert. He'd be great for this. And this is after I'd initially years ago when I almost had it funded, cast Michael Parks. Um, right. And he was unreal, terrifying 
uh, me and Scott Hayes, Scott Hayes was cast five years or, you know, a while before too, when we almost got it made and the two of them were together and we were like, what is happening? I didn't know if uh, Michael Parks was talking to me or, or reading. He was just in it, wow. but then he yeah. was sick and he was sick. And unfortunately he passed away. And um, yeah, when, so when we approached Robert, I mean, just to be frank, like a lot of actors were really scared of this role. Um, mm. I don't yeah. mean necessarily like, oh, it's it's scary. I mean, just it, it ha it, you clearly in this movie have to go places that people are like, I can go there. But I I don't want to go there. And I, I can't tell you to change the things in the script because it's mm -hmm. so necessary. They got it. Yeah. But they're like, you're just going to have to find somebody else. And Robert, yeah. I thought when I talked to him, he basically got on a FaceTime with me and he was like, I don't know, man, like, I like the script, but. I just don't know and um i think i get it like uh, you can read this and if you get the wrong person it could be taken a totally different way and this movie can be really just a mess um yeah. i'm not bragging or anything i just think like i get why actors want to know who who you know whose hands they're in and um yeah. i think that's what robert wanted to know so he asked me to watch my film my previous film and I showed it to him and he called me back right after and he was like, oh, God damn, we're going to do this movie, right? He was just suddenly like very excited. And like, yeah, OK, uh, so I guess I got to do it. So I think rightfully they want to make sure this person who's going to execute this really kind of unsettling material and uh, sensitive subject matter properly. Um, and yeah. so did that. And man, he he was dedicated to getting every word because the script was very much written how they speak the dialects and uh, you know Robert Diltz who wrote it has a very keen voice in it and so Robert wanted to honor that and get every word properly and it was it was a lot of fun to see him do his thing i mean there's a lot of dialogue and he was dedicated and had it all down he yeah, came he so, came with it so impressive yeah, so impressive. Yeah. His, his performance is definitely applaud worthy through and through. Um, and as we come to a bit of a like a summary and a, and a bit of a wrap up with this interview, again, appreciate your time because I know you're very popular as this film is being released soon. But um, if I gave you the floor as we came up to a bit of a summary and close or a wrap up, um, the people of Australia are listening to this interview right now. What is it you'd like to tell them, maybe to encourage them? Why should they see, you know, what Josiah saw on shutter streaming service from the 4th of august what is it you'd like to tell them why they should watch it well i think if you like movies um the one thing about all of them is you want to come away feeling something and there's no way <laughs> like it or hate this movie you will not come away from it feeling something pretty one way or the other it's it's very much that kind of movie that you you invest the time in to watch and you you peel back the layers and if you can ride that out, you're in for a treat and maybe too much for people, you know, and that's all good. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, that's what yeah. I would say. That's also a compliment. Yeah. Tremendous. Look, I, as I said to you, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. And as the credits rolled, I actually began an instant rewatch. I went straight back in for more. Um, you know, oh, this wow. film is, is truly a thrill ride. And uh, I really commend your work for this film. I'm very excited to meet you, promote it. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, August 4th, please subscribe to Shudder. And I assure you, this is a film worth checking out and definitely worth supporting. And most importantly, Vincent, I look forward to more great things to come your way. Thanks so much for your time. And and people of Australia, love you. And uh, I need to get down there one day. So please do. Let's I have a beer you, when you come you enjoy. Out, right? Absolutely. Thanks again. My pleasure, right. Vincent. All the best. Thank you again. Ciao.